Welcome to Relation Tales. Please like this video and subscribe Relation Tales. Ralph looked up into her eyes. She was wild with passion her movements almost maniac as she moved in deep practice strokes up and down the length of his pole. Over and over, she rose up and then slammed down burying him deep inside her wonderfully muscled sheath. Her tightness and warmth were amazing as he lost track of all other sensory input. She was wearing a sinister smile as she controlled both of their pleasure forcing him to just lay back and accept the pounding she was happily administering to him. Ralph was in heaven. It had been nine or ten months since he had gotten anything but a cursory quickie from her. Her head suddenly flipped backwards, her wet hair moving in a seductive dance of desire and need. She moaned loudly as her body convulsed with spasms deep inside her. She hardly noticed when a few seconds later he pushed upwards with all his strength, burying himself deep inside her as he released his essence of life at the entrance to her womb. Her body exhausted, Callista collapsed onto Ralph and sighed. My gosh, Ralphie, that was amazing. I mean, that was probably the best you've ever done for me. You can be a really good lover when you want to be. Her tone was belittling and cold, like an angry dog owner responding to his pet after it finally learns a new trick. Kissing him on the lips like an adult would a child. She smiled at him, though her expression seemed almost sad or melancholy. She sighed and got out of bed, heading towards the bathroom. Ralph watched his wife of five years walk away, her lively, sensual sway reminding him of when they first met in college, when she was a swimmer for their university. No matter what, he thinks to himself, she has just got to be a witch about it. Damn it, how can someone who looks and pleasures the way she does, and that I have loved so much, have such a piss-poor personality? Shaking his head, he gets up off the bed as soon as he hears the shower start to flow. Sitting on the toilet he contemplates her weird mood swings. Just then the shower curtain is pushed aside as Callista looks at him he jumps. You startled me, he says sheepishly. She shakes her head then shrugs as she drops an expended container of disposable douche in the trash can in front of him. He glances at her with a, why are you doing that? Confusion painted on his face. She never cleaned herself out after they made love or had sex, he thought. She had always said she liked to feel and smell of him on her and in her afterwards. Callista looking at him almost as if she can read his question, shakes her head letting her hair move around her face in a wild, untamed look says, This is a new day, and I want to be fresh, and new everywhere, with a sarcastic tone. Before Ralph can say anything else, she closes the shower curtain and begins to wash her long auburn tresses. Finishing her shower, they exchange places with a minimum of conversation. He washes himself off, lost in the emotional turmoil of the past 18 months, and the understanding that nothing that Callista has done during that time is as it appears. He remembers coming home early from work almost 18 months ago and finding Callista and her personal trainer a huge muscle-bound Norwegian gorilla in the throes of passion. The big ulf was pumping in and out of her like a piston in a dragster. She was screaming in a way she never did when she was with him. It made him feel physically sick. He had nearly left and considered harming himself after finding them together. But after some serious thinking, he decided to try to save his marriage instead. He had never experienced such emotional pain in his entire life. He thought he had managed to discover them without being seen. But when he returned home an hour later, Callista was crying on the couch, still wearing the same housecoat. She ran over to him and hugged him tightly, crying as she said, I never meant for him to see what happened today. It was the first time. Bjorn has been pursuing me for almost seven months, and I finally gave in. Please forgive me. It will never happen again. She looked and acted so sincere, and apologized for hours and days afterwards. She changed her health club, and Ralph had watched as she slapped the freak of nature as she stormed out of the old health club. He had realized that her attitude in spite of her Academy Award-winning performance was a downward spiral from that point to this day. How is it a man can love a woman so completely for six years, and yet she is capable of gutting him like a deer? Of course, many guys can be just as heartless, he reckoned. He knew within weeks she had not ended the affair, but she now had a great trouble to conceal it much better. He tried to act as if he knew nothing maybe she would change her mind, or come to her senses or something. However, all his inactivity did was made her more self-assured and arrogant as she reveled in his apparent ignorance of her affair. Now he was torn as he struggled over his desire to have his loving wife back, or if she had really ever loved him in the first place. He knew he had, had enough of the pain to last a lifetime, and really didn't want any more. Callista had even used her younger sister Stephanie to be a moderator between the two of them for the last 14 months. Yeah, that was a big help Stephanie came over and talked and interacted with him for four hours twice a week. At first, Ralph had thought it was to work things out but one night Stephanie, and he had followed Callista and found out she would go to Bjorn's house for some personal fitness training. 
He made sure that he had cleaned himself off thoroughly before exiting the shower wearing a towel. Callista was standing in their bedroom made up to the hilt. She was wearing a sizzling hot little black cocktail dress that showed off her cleavage as well as much more of her toned legs than he wanted anyone but him to see. Where did you get that dress from? He gulped. She twirled and he saw she had on a tiny black thong. The dress would not ever be able to conceal her bare cheeks when she sat down. Oh Ralphie, I bought this especially for the occasion, for this very special day. The smile in her voice was almost louder than the smile on her face. The way she moved on the stiletto heels was almost hypnotic. The upward thrust of the heels showing off her toned muscled legs leaving him helpless to do anything but watch her as he always had when she dressed this way. Callista seductively wrapped her arms around his neck as his towel almost fell off. He grabbed the towel with both hands as she removes one of her hands and brushes the new tint pole he is hiding under the towel. Kissing him lightly on the lips then on both cheeks as her hand almost if it has a mind of its own continues to tease his fully erect manhood as she whispers. After five years of marriage, and almost six and a half years together, the way you made love to me today was almost enough to make me sad that was the last time you'll ever touch me, but such is life. Her smile seemed almost evil as she suddenly spun around, letting go of him. Her hair flew wildly around her face as she rushed out of the bedroom and downstairs. Ralph was completely shocked by what he had just heard, clutching his towel. He dashed out of the bedroom, calling after Callista, demanding to know what she meant. He hurried down the stairs, but when his still damp feet hit the tile floor, he slipped and fell hard, landing barefoot and sliding on the cold tile. As he looked up, still dazed from his fall, he was surprised to see his wife in the arms of Bjorn, her muscular Norwegian fitness instructor whom he despised for nearly a year and a half. Callista glared down at Ralph, clearly disgusted. You always find a way to embarrass yourself, and me too, she said, shaking her head. Then she reached up and kissed Bjorn, who had been sneering at Ralph with a look that said, Yeah, I've been sleeping with your wife, and I'm going to keep doing it. Ralph gets up on his knees covering himself to provide some decency looks up at his wife with just the barest hint of tears in his eyes. Baby what's going on? You're my wife. She breaks from Bjorn's grip and looks at her watch, smiling she says, not as of five minutes ago we aren't. I suppose I should say, guess what dear? We're divorced. Bjorn reaches into his jacket and hands her envelope. She walks over to Ralph with a purposeful, sensuous sway, then runs the envelope up and down both sides of his face. What are you talking about? Baby we're still married, Ralph asks in total confusion. These are the final divorce papers you signed ten weeks ago when you thought you were signing my company medical insurance forms. You remember I was giving you a B job at the time and swallowed your pitiful little load. You know Ralph, when I swallow Bjorn I lose half of it out the sides of my mouth. He pumps in about a quart. Ralph looked like he was going to be sick at that revelation. Handing him the envelope. He opens it and reads, April 21st 12 noon, irreconcilable differences, pay off $600,000 is acceptable. You which are taking the money I got from mom and dad's estate sale. How could you? Joint property, my now ex-husband. You should have put our shared property into a trust so I couldn't touch it. But hey, I've left you with $400,000 so you should consider yourself lucky. Now, do as you're told and transfer it into this account, she said, handing him a piece of paper with a bank account number on it. You have 20 minutes, or I'll have you arrested for disobeying a court order. It's on page 12. I included it in the document to make sure you cooperate. Ralph stared at the woman he thought he knew until just moments ago. He wanted to say something, anything. But in the end, he looked at the paper in his hands, his shoulders drooping in defeat, and went to the phone to authorize the transfer of funds. As the bank put him on hold, she thought back over the last 18 months she realized how important that this move was for her long-term well-being. She had made a discovery in junior high that she had a wonderful effect on guys even older married guys. All she had to do was dress to show off her body, and she almost always got her way. She also knew it was necessary to be the leader of the pack, and she set out to be the coolest and most popular girl in school by her sophomore year was the reigning queen at her high school until her graduation. She smiled as she remembered the way her algebra teacher had always made sure she sat in the front row to get up skirt shots. It probably didn't hurt that she always wore her panties tight and used a tanning salon to keep her skin at a perfect bronze tone. All through high school she was one of the women every guy wanted to date. Although she wouldn't let anyone have their way with her, she was always in control and always on the lookout for a better man, taking any guy she wanted at her whim. So many of those girls whose boyfriends she stole would get so hostile to her. But hey, she couldn't help it if she was hot, and the other girls weren't. Besides, those girls should be thankful that she showed them the flaws in their pitiful little boyfriends. They weren't very faithful after all. 
Then in early October of her senior year a week after she turned 18, she got drunk at a friend's party. She had broken up with her boyfriend and her friend's father had comforted her as she cried. He even carried her up to his bedroom since his wife was away with her sick mother and let her sleep. He made sure everyone else at the party was gone or passed out drunk and came back up to take care of her. She awoke sometime later nude on his bed her body awash with pure passion and Mr. Rayblay face buried in her box as he pushed her towards probably the best orgasm she had ever had. He was pumping in and out of her swollen tinderbox for the second time that night and she was involved with the father of her best friend. When he was done with her for the night, he helped her clean up and tucked her in bed next to his daughter. For the next six weeks, two to three times a week, Callista had allowed that man free access to her body she as she learned how to make a man crazy. She became very talented in her newly developed oral ability, and even swallowed. Her mentor taught her to screw in a myriad of positions. Callista had enough ammunition to blackmail the idiot since she managed to film three of their sessions and then cut him off. She was demanding he pay her for the trauma he had caused her, or else his wife, family, church and employer would all find the tape in their possessions. So from December of her senior high school year until she married Ralph the September after she graduated college, he paid her $400 a month a tidy sum of over $23,000 for six weeks of sex lessons. She remembered being a bit bitter over how her friend's dad had abused her, so she used the next nine months before she left for college to use and abuse guys in her high school. She also used her body as well as her new talents to destroy the girls who had not treated her with the proper respect by taking their boyfriends and screwing them then sending them back to their old girlfriends. She even went so far as to take three boyfriends away from her pain and the bum little sister Stephanie when she was home from college her freshman and sophomore years. My god, her sister had moaned, cried, and complained as if her life had ended. Callista had explained to the twerp she, Callista was the queen bee, and would take what she wanted from whomever she had wanted. The whole idea of her sister going to bed with her boyfriend crushed Stephanie, but she really had no recourse against her sister. Callister reasoned wouldn't any high school guy rather have a 20-year-old college girl with a perfect face and body who puts out, or a slightly overweight high school ice queen. I mean be real. The guys loved how she made them turn to jello. In college, she had been introduced to better hung men with a good deal of stamina, and she also found out many professors, male and female, were willing to give out wonderful grades for a taste or use of her body. Her first three years were a delightful combination of control and pleasure, and she maintained a 3.8 grade point average and received numerous outstanding student scholarships. Then in December of her junior year, she and Ralph were introduced to each other by mutual acquaintance from the swim team. Ralph was actually one of the trainers for the swim team. She had been less than impressed. That is until a few days later she had overheard him talking to some friends about his parents, ill health and that he was in line to receive a nice settlement from their estate in the next few years. Callista went to work immediately scheming and plotting, and quickly wrapped her love-starved little man around her finger. Of course, what he didn't know, and never found out was that she was still doing her professors. One must keep up her grades, so she kept one of her studs available to take care of her needs. Girls need pampering you know. When she got married, she really tried to stay faithful to Ralph turning over a new leaf. She only played around a couple of times during her first three years, okay four or five guys. Then two years ago, she had met Bjorn and it took her almost six months to overcome his reluctance to get involved with a married woman. Of course, Ralph had spoiled the first time by coming home early. My lord, she had to cry and whine and act so repentant. She even had Bjorn fired from his health club to soothe Ralph's poor ego. To this day, she wondered why Ralph had not caught on that Bjorn was majority owner in the group of three health clubs. She was extremely careful from then on when she met with Bjorn taking care to ensure her private lessons were always at different places and times. And she always had two or three people to give an alibi for her when she did. Ralph was so easy to play he would just sit like a lovesick puppy and believe her simple responses when he questioned her about anything. She even talked her little sister into being an intermediary with Ralph as the two of them had always gotten along well. Good lord they were quite a pair. Callista figured Stephanie was five years younger in age and maturity so Ralph was about her level. During the most intense part of the affair, Callista talked to Stephanie about problems with Ralph so she could go talk to him and try to improve their marriage. These meetings with Ralph twice a week gave her time to see her other man while Ralph was busy. She always made sure to save money in a separate account for herself. It was important to her to look good and keep up with the latest fashion trends. Ralph and she argued often about her monthly clothing expenses. He thought she spent money on clothes she never wore, but she did wear them, just not around him. 
Callista enjoyed the attention of attractive men, and when she could catch their eye away from their partners, she knew she still had it. Ralph just had never figured out how much he had paid for her to get these men's attention, or in some cases, get some of them to give her some very personal intimate things they possessed. When the settlement on Ralph's parents' estate finally came in, Callista was in heaven. The total was right at $1 million, and the doe had didn't put any of it in trust, so it was considered joint property. She had contacted a less than morally upright lawyer that a girl Bjorn knew had recommended about a month after the settlement. In the end, she had to use some oral enticements on a number of occasions to get him to see things her way, something Bjorn never knew anything about. Nevertheless, in the end he had filed for divorce in a county two over from theirs using a phony address and a P.O. box number. When the papers arrived, she had signed for them. That night fed her loving trusting husband a lot of beer and a bee job while she had him sign some new medical papers from her part-time workplace. Once the paperwork was finalized, she planned her final move. She wanted to have one last sexual encounter with Ralph and stun him so he'd transfer the money without consulting his lawyer, which could cause problems. She knew she was less than four hours away from relaxing on a beach in Jamaica, drink in hand, with the sun shining down on her. It was going to be the perfect start to her new life. However, Ralph brought her back to reality when he suddenly responded to the bank manager on the phone, giving out his account codes. Despite Callista's glare, Ralph gave both his and her codes to release the money. After hanging up, he informed his now ex-wife that they would call back for verification in five minutes. As he rushed upstairs, stumbling on the top step, both Callista and the antagonist smirked at his clumsiness. He blushed but continued to the master bedroom. He returned downstairs after changing into a shirt and pants. On his way down, he overheard Bjorn asking Callista, How did you manage to get him to sign over the money so easily? I was sure if I hit him out of the blue he would just respond versus letting him think about it for a while. Then he could have done something to at least slow it down. Okay, but how did you know he would respond like that? You have to know your adversary well enough to use both their strengths and weaknesses against them. Trust me lover, I know my ex like the back of my hand. Maybe even better than he knows himself. The phone rang right as Ralph deftly alighted on the tile floor. Answering it, he verified the transfer and handed the phone to his ex-wife. They want to talk to you. Upon answering and giving them her release code, she said, Thank you, hung up the phone then walked over to Ralph. While we were upstairs saying goodbye, Bjorn loaded the last of my bags and stuff into the car. Turning, she handed Bjorn her purse. Please go on out baby, I'll be right behind you. Facing Ralph, she put her arms around his neck and kissed him on his lips. Looking him directly in the eyes, she took her last shot at demoralizing him. You're a good provider, friend, and can be a better than average lover. However, frankly you're a putz. I want a real man, one I can respect, one who is awesome in bed and can support. No, really spoil me in the manner, which I deserve. That would be Bjorn for now. Have a great life if you can find someone to accept your bumbling ways. She walked out of his house with confidence, like a queen leaving her court. As she got into her Corvette convertible, she made sure to leave her legs parted enough for Ralph to notice she wasn't wearing the thong she had on earlier. She waved at Ralph, blew him a kiss, and yelled that he'd never see her again as they drove off. Bjorn smoothly navigated through traffic as they sped away. Ralph sighed, noticing the neighbors staring at him from across the street. He waved back, then picked up the newspaper and went back inside, a single tear rolling down his cheek. He thought even the most deceitful women deserved some sympathy. Ralph checked the clock, then sat down to try to understand what had just happened. After a while, he went upstairs and into the bedroom, feeling disgusted as he looked at the messy sheets from their earlier activities. He striped the bed of the sheets, tossed a bow at them and the bed spread into the trash, remaking the bed with a freshly washed set and down comforter, making sure everything down to the pillows was new. He sighed and questioned the situation aloud. I really wonder how long it will take me to put things back in order and have some form of normalcy back in my life. Looking at the phone, he knew he should call Stephanie. He wanted to let her know she didn't need to come over for their twice-weekly meeting tonight, as well as relay to her what has just occurred with Callista. Picking up the phone, he dialed her number. Hi Steph, it's Ralph. Well hello. Listen your sister just left. She handed me a set of final divorce papers and took off with her muscle-headed boyfriend. It's over. I'm so sorry Ralph. Yeah, listen Ralph, I'll come over for a bit okay. It sounds like you could use some company. Yeah, I think I do need some company. He waited for her to hang up her phone before following suit. He walked downstairs and headed to the kitchen. Retrieving a beer he continued into the living room still not fully comprehending what has just happened. The emotions he felt were numbing his senses. Sitting in his overstuffed chair staring into space, he was brought back to the present by a never-so-light knock on the front door. Come in, Ralph called out. 
A young woman in her early twenties peeked around the corner of his living room. She had shoulder-length light brown hair and an almost boyish figure. Granted that she didn't have the perfectly toned body as Callista's, but it actually made her appear smaller than she was. Wearing her trademark polo shirt and jeans, Steph was more into function than form. Unlike her older sibling, she smiled when Ralph said, Hi little lady. Running over to Ralph sitting in his chair she crawled onto his lap and straddled his legs. I'm not little. Besides daddy used to say the best things come in small packages. Pressing her hungry mouth down on his, she began to probe his mouth with her tongue. Moving forward in the chair, he stood up and wrapped his arms under her legs to support her and keep her in place as she wrapped her legs around his body. Making their way into the bedroom, he knelt on the bed and gently laid her back while still being held between her legs. Hey, lover, how did you finally get her to take the last step? We've been waiting for this for so long, he asked. Ralph thought about how Stephanie had initially been a sounding board for him and had tried to gently guide Callista back to him. When the final settlement of his parents' estate had come in, he had been surprised to find out they left him over $7 million after paying off all the debts. Even better, $6 million was in a blind trust that only he knew about. When Callista suddenly became excited upon learning he was worth close to $1 million, it was pretty clear what she was after, even if she thought he was unaware of her plans. His lawyer had been monitoring court filings in the surrounding counties and found the courthouse where Callista had filed for divorce. His lawyer waited until she played the game with the divorce papers signing and quietly had her lawyer investigated. Faced with the problems of a fraudulent legal action that could lead to disbarment, he turned state's evidence and the police sting went into full action. Callista headed downtown to privately send her money to whatever bank she had set herself up with. Only all his money remained locked up tightly in his accounts, an account he removed her from a week earlier. With the police listening devices in place in the house, they had picked up the confession about tricking him into signing the papers as well as her admission to Bjorn about her planning the money sting. When Ralph called the bank, he had talked with the police detectives not the bank manager. Therefore when Callista walked into the bank in her blithe manner thinking she was now fancy free, they arrested her on the spot along with Bjorn. Bjorn would be given a chance for a deal. Turn on his lover and he would get to stay in the USA being he was a foreign national or if he stuck with his tight little piece of bomb, he would be deported after his jail time. Callista faced the possibility of jail time and having to sign the actual divorce papers where Ralph would take on all the bills. She would receive $10,000 for each year of their marriage, which Ralph had kept in an account for her until she was released from jail. However, the total amount would only be $50,000 not the $600,000 she had hoped for. If she refused this offer, Ralph would sue her, and she would end up with no money from the divorce. This realization was going to devastate Callista. She would soon learn that Ralph was well aware of what was happening in his life and could be tough when necessary. In the end, Ralph would also have Stephanie, her perfect younger sister. Stephanie smiled as she responded, admitting that all she needed was her knowledge of Callista. She knew her sister's strengths and weaknesses and how to use them to her advantage. Trust me, lover, I understand my older sister inside out, maybe even better than she understands herself. I've been playing games with her for years, and this time, I've won. She used to steal my boyfriends in high school and college just to see me cry. I've known I was in love with you for the last year. When I understood what she was doing to you I knew I could be yours, and you could be mine, and justice be done. Oh, Ralph whispered as he looked at Stephanie, and smiled. Recognizing that special look she had that meant she was his for the taking, he couldn't help but smile. He had watched that look in her eyes for almost 14 months as they shared one other, and now they would share it with each other for the rest of their lives. Second story, I found out about videos and photos of my girl with other dude, how do I move on? So, a little backstory we had a relationship for less than a year, but a pretty intense one. One of the things that we discussed the most was the fact that she liked going out to parties with her friends and consistently told her that I did not appreciate it because it was an environment where there were other dudes trying to hit on her and if she was drunk something could happen. Of course she always told me that I was just insecure and that's it. A few days ago, I got a photo of my ex-girlfriend sitting very close to another guy, with her leg on top of his leg and his arm around her leg, almost like they were hugging and very close to each other. Their body language made it seem like they were flirting at least. I also received a video where I saw them sitting away from the rest of the group, but my ex and that guy were really close to each other. This is the girl I not only loved and cared for, but also paid for everything for her, her education, rent, healthcare, and all her needs. When confronted, she said that the video, picture meant nothing, that she wasn't doing anything wrong. I ended up things with her and blocked her from everything so she started texting saying how deeply sorry she was, how I was the only man she wanted in her life, 
and that she loved me, that she knew she did wrong by being that close to him but assured me that nothing else happened and that she didn't do anything wrong. I told her that I believed the pictures and told her that she can be with him given how sorry she was and didn't even block the guy from her social media. She responded back by blocking the guy and assuring me he has no importance or meaning in her life and that she only wants to be with me and doesn't want to lose me. I said I forgave her for what she did, but that I will still be going and see with her and blocking her from everywhere. Now depression has hit in and hard, what do you recommend to move on? I really just want to believe her that she didn't do anything with him but I also feel like that would be some very stupid thing to do. Any advice? Thanks for joining us on this chapter of Relation Tales. If you were moved by these stories, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Don't miss out on the upcoming emotional roller coaster of relationships. Your support means the world, and we can't wait to share more compelling tales with you. Until next time, remember, every relationship has a story worth telling. See you soon.